The year 1862. It's the 6th of April, a beautiful sunny morning in the Union camps. The men are eating breakfast or writing letters. The Confederates, at this point, were thought to be two days away at Corinth, Mississippi. With this thought in mind, the Union troops were resting a bit at ease at this location known as Pittsburgh Landing, one of the Confederates' accesses to the Tennessee River. Here they would wait for reinforcements from Ohio to march on Corinth and secure it from the Confederates. General Grant was upriver a few miles at this time and apparently thought it unnecessary to entrench the camp or to send cavalry to scout the Corinth Road. Meanwhile, Confederate General Sidney Johnston had decided not to wait for Grant's reinforcements and was able to set up his battle lines a mile away from the Union camp, which he suddenly marched upon and overwhelmed. Such was the case of many battles during this nation's civil war, when cousin fought cousin and neighbor fought neighbor. A country divided, a war that was exclusively America's war. What you're witnessing is not the actual war, but a reenactment of the battles of Pittsburgh Landing and Shiloh. This reenactment was not in Mississippi, but in Jackson, Michigan. This is the largest annual Civil War event in the Midwest. Over 2,000 participants from throughout the United States made their way to Jackson's Cascade Falls Park to relive this romantic period of American history. When you stepped under the grounds, you stepped back to 1862 in body and spirit. Cherie Wells, president of this year's muster, talked with Michigan Magazine about the event's growing interests and participants. Well, I think it's uh, this was the one time where we fought each other, and uh, that's a, a real interest to so many people. And you know, it's it's about our country, and it didn't take place anywhere else. It took place here. It's a romantic time. It's a tragic time. A sad time. Um, I, I, and I believe that a lot of the a lot of the people can trace back. Um, to their ancestors and, also, so that's uh, very interesting to them. And this has been going on for how many years now? Right this is here? the ninth year. Ninth year. And uh, what brought it here to Jackson, Michigan, right here at the uh, uh, Cascade uh, well, Park? Well, it started up in uh, Mason, uh, not too far from here, and uh, the par county parks director was up there visiting one day, and they were having a small reenactment there, and he thought, what a great place to, to have right here at the... Oh, uh, yeah, we have a natural amphitheater for the battle, for us, so it's great for spectators. It's one of, I believe that's probably why it's grown so fast and so much, and it's the largest in the Midwest is because of the natural amphitheater for the spectators. And when you say it's the largest in the Midwest, uh, this is the largest reenactment of any kind throughout the mid in the Midwest of the Civil War. Reenactment. Besides ones that are on the actual battlefields, right. this is often an actual uh -huh. battlefield. So what does a person have to do? Say, like, if I want to be active or get involved in this uh, Civil War reenactment, what does uh, Dell have to do to, to be involved? You would join a club. Um, the Seventh Michigan Volunteer Infantry. They are the ones that host uh, the reenactment part of this. Uh, they are a union uh, a regiment, mm -hmm. so you would join um, a club such as that, and they meet, um, you know, like monthly, just like we do. Uh, you would have to purchase your uniforms and uh, different things like that. What are some of the unique things that we'll see here today? Um, of course, there's the battle that will be going on uh, mm -hmm. at 1:30. Uh, but during the battle, also we have the uh, the nurses that'll be out there. I think I mentioned that. Um, but we have the actual campsites, as you can you can smell right. the breakfast going on oh right now, and the, the campfire and the coffee. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have a commander's breakfast here in a little bit. They're cooking uh -huh. that right now. Uh, there will be, of course, a military ball tonight, which yeah. is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's going to um, The sitting down and talking yeah. and having lemonade, you know, with some of the yeah. ladies. Uh, there's uh, crafts that they're going to be doing. They're going to be doing uh, period jewelry demonstrations, what they would have worn back then. Um, uh, hair, how they would have done their hair, yeah. um, some of the little things like that. And watching the kids yesterday playing in the, the fountain over here was that just, neat? oh, yeah. it was wonderful, yes. It really does take it back into a time when uh, things were maybe, well, they were a lot more laid back. Mm -hmm. Even though it was a strifeful time and the war was going on, it still was a time of, uh, well, family. And that's just what this event attracts. Entire families come together to learn of America's unique heritage and have fun at the same time. Although Jackson County is now planning the 10th annual muster, it was nearly 14 years ago that the event was established first in Mason. It took the foresight and dedication of this man, Jim Guerrero, the director of the Jackson County Parks, to bring it to Jackson, where it has continuously grown. I've always had a real interest in the Civil War. 
And uh, about nine years ago, when I visited my hometown and saw a little Civil War uh, uh, encampment, I thought, well, geez, this would be really nice if we could do it in the Cascades Park in Jackson. And uh, we uh, invited the people to come down, and it's just grown every year. Well, it certainly has. And how many would you say, or how many registered uh, folks are in here today? Well, they had uh, 2,300 uh, that registered for the event as of about uh, 9 o'clock last night. So I suspect some more came in today. So maybe we have 2,500 or so. Uh, My. We're real pleased. I, I can say that uh, while we were filming the battle, while it unfolded, it certainly was for this guy uh, quite an event to, uh, to witness. Certainly, if you've never seen a full-scale uh, battle reenactment, it's, it's especially the people that we get uh, the, uh, really some great opinions from, the people see it for the first time. Uh, we, people come back, they come back every year to see it, but it's those people that have seen it for the first time that uh, you can are just kind of in awe. Yeah, they yeah. really are. Yeah. It's, that's what we, uh, we get a lot of pleasure from that. What is it, uh, where would you like to see it go now that it has uh, grown like it has? What do you have in the future for this uh, uh, park, uh, Jim? Well, next year will be our 10th uh, year, our 10th anniversary of the Civil War muster. So we're already, our committee, we have a fine volunteer committee that does a lot of hard work to put this event on. Certainly no one person could do this. But we're already hard at work thinking of uh, surprises, new things, something we can do really special for the 10th year of the Civil War muster here in Jackson. Well, it certainly has been special here today for us, I can tell you that. What, uh, to, to get an operation of this size, and I mean this magnitude, uh, how do you finance? How do you raise funds for such a, an event as this? Well, as you know, it's a, it's a free event to the public. You know, we don't charge <laughs> people to come here we don't charge to park your car it's all free and because we think the the uh, public enjoys this kind of event because it's so educational as well as uh, entertaining so we uh, you know we get corporate sponsorship we get uh, sponsorship from here in the local community from businesses uh, we obviously we and have t-shirts we sell t-shirts uh, we have people that concessions and arts and craft people that pay us to, to exhibit here uh, and then but, but the donations we have donation barrels with our volunteers around the park uh, and the people are very generous. Do you find that people are wanting to get more back or get find out more about their uh, rich history that we have here in Michigan? Uh, I, I think certainly they, they do. There's a lot of Civil War history in Michigan and right here in Jackson. You know, I mean, the birthplace of the Republican Party here yeah. in Jackson. Uh, the, the governor of Michigan during the Civil War, Austin Blair, was from Jackson. Jackson was one of two of the main muster points during the Civil War. Yeah. You either went to Detroit or Jackson. Yeah. If you were uh, drafted into the Army from anywhere yeah. in Michigan, these, this is where you came. So there, we have a lot of history here of the Civil War. And I think people want, want to explore the past and see more of that, especially in, in the 90s and our hectic lifestyles. Oh boy, yes. Uh, they, they like going back and seeing how it was in the 1860s because we just don't do the military. As you see, we have the complete civilian oh, yeah. uh, and how people live just as they would have uh, like you and I. Are I'm not too sure that. I could I could uh, live that kind of lifestyle, but it, it's interesting to to take a step back in time and to to witness and to see uh, how things did go on in that, yeah. in that period. We are here at the headquarters of the 7th Michigan Infantry, and with me is Don Everett. And Don Everett is the president of the 7th Michigan Infantry. Uh, Don, could you tell me uh, a bit about what your jobs and your duties are uh, with the 7th uh, Michigan Infantry? Well, basically, uh, for the last year, I've uh, been working on putting this event on. Uh -huh. We have to uh, assure that we have enough materials for them, wood, straw, water, medical attention, uh -huh. uh, coordinate their arriving and leaving. And that's a year-long job. This year, straw was a problem. Uh, the floods out west in the Mississippi, yeah. uh, they sent a lot of straw that way. And so straw was at a premium. Uh, water, fortunately, the, the area is pretty rich mm -hmm. in water. That's not a, that's not a major problem. Mm -hmm. uh, coordinating some of the troops here, uh, the cavalry people, most of them yesterday were in Detroit at the state fair. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So that was we had yeah. to make arrangements yeah. for them to arrive after midnight. But this is the seventh, thirteenth year of hosting an event. We've been in Jackson for nine years. Uh huh. And uh, Jim Guerrero is the fellow that brought us together with the Cascades, and it's been a tremendous uh, relationship. Uh, our two Confederate co-hosts that help us with this and the Cascades work hand in hand to put this event on and we really get a lot of support from not only from the, the, the parks people but from the Jackson community. Uh, the event has become part of the community. They look forward to this every year. We would like people to remember 
what it was like at the Civil War. It's only 130 years ago. And people don't realize where they came from. The Civil War was the turning point of America. It made America what it is today. And a lot of people have forgotten that. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaders and generals of the Civil War, uh, a lot of people don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. And these were tremendously important people, not only during the Civil War, but after them. Most of the politicians that came in the latter part of the uh, 19th century had fought in the Civil War. And that, that had a tremendous effect on the political makeup of this country. Do you find that folks are wanting to trace more of their family roots, more of their family history to... Uh, do, you, do you find that more people are wanting to get into this type of thing? Oh, certainly. Obviously, roots was the big... Yeah. <clears throat> that was the big start. That, that, that gave people the, the idea to trace their family roots. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to find the people who can trace the Civil War yeah. ancestor. What's really amazing to me is that uh, people give up their, their jobs for two or three days uh, during the year and come from all over the country to participate in this reenactment. Uh, it, it <laughs> there, there must be a, a whole lot of uh, belief in what they're doing. Well, that's one thing you find. You talk to most any reenactor and they have an abiding faith in history. They, you know, it just oozes from yeah. them. Uh, they, 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 they continually study it. Uh, I have a large library and I don't get to study as much as I would like to because I'm involved in, mm -hmm. in putting uh, this on and this takes up a lot of my time. The, the reenactors really, really study. Most reenactors mm -hmm. know, have a lot of knowledge about the Civil War. And we are going to witness a battle here today. Uh, and this battle uh, took place uh, at what time? It was in April of 1862. It was originally a spring battle. This is the late summer, but we have to take a few liberties sometimes with history. Uh, General Grant was waiting just south of the Tennessee River for more troops to arrive, Don Carlos Buell, mm -hmm. uh, and they were going to conduct operations in the Mississippi, lower Mississippi Valley. Uh, the Confederates under Joe Johnson moved north out of Corinth and uh, attacked completely by surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, they caught Grant unaware of the attack. Grant was several miles from the front at the time. What does this battle, uh, what significance did this battle, was there a turning point for this battle or was there not? Well, the turning point was really the night after the first day. That's when the Union reinforcements arrived and that gave Grant the troops to counterattack with and eventually push uh, Johnson's army back to Corinth. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to see this unfold before too long, and uh, Don Everett, we'd certainly like to thank you for being part of Michigan Magazine and for keeping history alive. And uh, so thanks again for being part of Michigan Magazine. You're welcome. Food played an important role in the Civil War, some say especially in this specific battle. When the Confederates attacked, they had not eaten in 24 hours. Many, while advancing, stopped to loot the Union camp of its foodstuff, eating the meals cooked by the Yankees just minutes before. Jackie Truitt, a Michigan Magazine writer and an avid Civil War reenactment enthusiast, likes to get her children involved totally in this experience. They spend countless hours studying the Civil War. Her children's studies include actual growing through the year foods that one would have found as staples of the 1860s, then actually preparing items of the period. Dale visited with Jackie at the encampment to discuss the diet of the day. Basically what it is, during the, the families during the Civil War didn't have a grocery store to go to, so they ate out of what they raised. Usually it was vegetables. Ah, we have vegetables. You ate a lot of vegetables. Bread products was the next big ones. This is this what, a, is a This is a beet. Ah. <laughs> they ate the beet greens, which is a little wilted now in the sun, and the beets. Cabbage was a very, very good, healthy thing. They ate cabbage. There was always plenty of carrots and potatoes. Good for the eyesight. Good mm -hmm. for lots of things. Yes. Um, onions. Onions, leeks. You had lots of produce that you tried to preserve. The other thing was bread products. Oftentimes when the biscuits were made out of sour milk. Sour Ooh. milk. Who wants to drink that? But they didn't let it go to waste. Yeah. So they would make sour milk biscuits. Here's no, I, some that, dough ready. Yeah. 
Okay. There's the biscuit. And there's all. the biscuit. But all we need is a little bit of butter and jam and gel. And they would have honey. 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 Homemade honey. Well, maple syrup would go on the biscuits, but they'd have biscuit, the homemade, homemade jellies would be available. They had a lot of bread products. And they did have sweets. Donuts were common. Pie crust cookies. When you made the squirrel pie, you had a little dough left over. There was the kid's treat, a little bit of cinnamon. If they had apples around, the apples is a common fruit. Yeah. They oftentimes would chop that up. You think apple fritters are modern, but they would chop it up way, and put it in the dough, way, way back. back yeah. This is sourdough bread. Sourdough is an old timer. Back then, uh, they didn't have the, well, the modern things of today. And uh, so I believe probably that did make a stronger family tie. They probably had a lot of fun, though, because they would get yeah. together and bake, and they had the smells in the kitchen, you know, they just had a lot of fun. Who, we had to, who do we have on our lap here? This is Sarah. If you remember, when we met her a while back, she was a tiny baby on my, my lap in a slime machine. That's right. Hi, Sarah. She's now three. Three years old. Welcome to Michigan Magazine. And her sister, Heather, sews most all the clothes. Where's Heather? Heather's, Hi, Heather. She's now hand-stitching a quilt. Great. And there's Ben. Uh, ben, uh, I talked to him earlier this summer. Oh, and, and Nathan. Uh, yep. And Nathan. And, uh, Hi. And uh, they were all in the garden. Well, at this time, we'd like to say thank you very much, Jackie Troop, for being part of our program again. It's always nice to see you wherever we're at in the state of Michigan. And uh, take care, Sarah. We're talking with Bev Nichols, and Bev Nichols is the director of the uh, ladies' social events that's happening here. Is that correct, Bev? Yes, yes. And what we have right here before us is what? Well, basically, the ladies have attended um, a lovely little program on period jewelry and hair fashions to better educate themselves on the proper jewelry styles and what they wore and also how to properly dress their hair in a style familiar with the 1860s. Um, right now, they're uh, making nosegays. It's just a little token of appreciation to the ladies for attending our event. And they can take them to the ball this evening with tonight, later on tonight. So it'll be real nice. What other things have been taking place here? Uh, this is a, a a social event for the ladies to get together and mm -hmm. to talk about uh, the things that have been happening and so on. Right, right. It's a great opportunity. Um, this is kind of an end of the year um, wrap up, so to speak. Um, we've been reenacting since uh, May, June, most of us, and we do this throughout the summer. So being the end of the summer, this event is a real nice kind of end of season finale. There's still some other wonderful events going on, but they start to thin out during the cold weather months. Now, your attire that you are wearing, mm -hmm. is this something that Bev Nichols made herself? Um, actually, no. One of the other ladies in our unit made this, and um, I ended up purchasing it from her because I liked it so much. <laughs> I do usually make most of my very, own Very, very nice. Very lovely. <laughs> what about uh, the other uh, dresses? Are these things that uh, most of the people who attend this are active in this? Uh, do they make their own clothing? For yeah, most part? of the women um, do. Um, you've probably noticed in the Sutler area, a lot of the Sutlers are selling things. Um, a lot of the ladies do so and very well. Um, I have to admire a lot of them. Some of them are completely handmade. Um, I know one of our ladies um, completely hand makes her whole outfits. It's just fantastic what she does. But um, for economy reasons, um, I think most of the ladies prefer to do their own sewing because it's very expensive. Um, an, out, an outfit similar to mine would probably cost around $300 wow. Wow. to make. So um, it does uh, help if you can sew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Well, it's been nice talking with you, Bev Nichols, okay. and we wish you all the success uh, that uh, these events bring. And it looks like you got a big crowd this year. Is it yeah. is bigger than it was last year? Yeah, actually, it was funny. Early today, we ran out of registration forms for the reenactors, and we had 15. 1,500 printed, so there are probably close to 1,600, which was our my, registration, my. which is just phenomenal. And just keeps growing year after year. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And it's a lot of it is it's the park and the Jackson community. We're yeah. just thrilled, thrilled with it. When you get done with this event, you start right back into the 94's event. Yes, we do. Yeah. Well, we Next thank you week. very much for being part of Michigan Magazine and inviting us down here. Okay, you're quite welcome. All right. What a wonderful day Michigan Magazine had at the Cascade Civil War Muster. We went away that day, looking forward to next year's reenactment, with a deeper understanding of Michigan's involvement in the Civil War. But as we all know, the North and South were eventually reunited, and such was the case of the Jackson reenactment. For the evening, anyway, the camps joined forces for a period military ball.
With this, we leave you with the music and style of a period forever gone in American and Michigan history, which will continue to live on in our memories, thanks to the wonderful efforts of the reenactors. Thank you.